With the release of the trailer for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, we are seeing fans all over the globe, including in our own comments section, starting to debate once again the power level of one Wanda Maximoff, aka the Scarlet Witch. One common thing that people have been debating is what other magic users she could take on. And people aren't limiting themselves to just Marvel. Any comic book mage is up for discussion. So I figured it would be kind of fun to jump into the fray myself, you know, stir up the pot a little bit and throw in my own two cents. Now, I'm sure that Doctor Strange is going to prove to be more than capable of going up against her in that movie. So as such, I'm not going to include him on the list. I am, however, going to be looking at spell slingers from across Marvel, DC, and even one from Dark Horse, just to throw in a little bit of spice for you, who I think Wanda could take down with her chaos magic. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into it. All right, so before we get too deep into this, we need to have a little bit of a chat first. This video is going to be largely just conjecture. Nothing that I say here is going to be worth starting a riot down in the comments. So don't go starting any fires. Because honestly, for each of the entries on this list, it'd be pretty easy for someone to make the opposite argument from what I'm doing here. And it would still be totally valid. This is all just for fun, cool? All right, now let me explain how Scarlet Witch would kick all of their butts. Starting with a bit of a softball here, admittedly, Agatha Harkness. Old Lady Harkness here is indeed a powerful spellcaster. That much is certain. And in the comics, she was actually the one that trained Wanda on how to use magic. But Wanda already won this fight. Agatha's second death, and the one that stuck for a good long while, came at the hands of the Scarlet Witch who confronted Agatha about her children. Now that is a big long story. Basically, Agatha was the one who explained to Wanda that her children were not really real necessarily, but actually just fragments of Mephisto's soul, which is a thing that can happen apparently. Long story short, Agatha wound up wiping Wanda's memory of her kids in order to stop her from trying to fight a guy who is basically the devil. And while it worked at the time, the memory wipe didn't really take, and thus we have this confrontation. Now, in a fight between these two, Agatha does bring to the table literal eons of study, which gives her a distinct advantage. But Wanda's use of chaos magic, which grants her powers to do stuff like, oh, I don't know, alter the very fabric of reality, would probably prove to be a bit too much for the old bird. Now, yes, Agatha did eventually come back in the comics, so she didn't stay totally dead, which could be a knock against the Scarlet Witch, but whatever. She was gone from the page for about 12 years though, which is a lifetime in comic terms, so there is that. And considering the fact that we literally just saw her kick Agatha's butt in the MCU already, kind of tell you that this fight is a little bit of a given. Unless Agatha recruits her grandchildren, the Salem Seven, to help her. In which case, I don't think it's quite so cut and dry. I would still probably give it to Wanda though, but it would be a little bit more difficult for her. Let's get really out there for a second and talk about Rasputin from Hellboy. I told you we weren't just gonna be sticking to Marvel. Grigory Rasputin, based on the historical figure of the same name from around the time of the Romanov family in Imperial Russia, is an ultra powerful mystic and the arch nemesis of Hellboy. Having already possessed some degree of magical aptitude, his powers were greatly increased after he spent some time with the Baba Yaga. And no, I'm not saying that he hung out with John Wick, although that would be pretty awesome. In this case, I'm talking about the witch from Slavic folklore. Now, Rasputin's power set, as far as what he is capable of, is honestly fairly nebulous. Mind control seems to be a pretty large focus of his spells, even showcasing the ability to control people from a relatively long ways away. And of course, we've also got to talk about the fact that the dude is basically immortal, having been alive since the 1800s. This is due to the fact that he managed to split his soul at one point and left a fragment of it with the Baba Yaga. However, despite being immortal, he isn't invincible. While he's taken some serious abuse over the years, if Wanda wanted to take him out, all she would really need to do is get a hold of the acorn that the Baba Yaga put that fragment of his soul into and destroy that. Now, don't get me wrong. Rasputin has proven himself to be a major threat to both Hellboy and the rest of the BPRD over the years. I mean, come on, you don't get to be the arch nemesis of the right hand of the devil 
by just, you know, sitting around and eating snack cakes. However, Wanda is just on a whole other level power-wise. So I think that if you put the two of them in a room together, Wanda's ultimately gonna come out on top, as long as she very quickly does something to try to stop him from utilizing any sort of mind control attacks. Which, considering the fact that she has a lot of experience dealing with people such as Professor Xavier, Emma Frost, and the like, I think she could probably figure something out relatively quickly. Loki is a literal god, which might make him just a bit of a challenge to take down. As you would expect, this figure from Norse mythology isn't your typical magic user. In addition to a deep knowledge of the mystical arts, he also possesses Asgardian, or rather, I guess, Frost Giant physiology, which grants him your usual package of superpowers, including strength, speed, durability, all that sort of stuff. It's not really on the same level as his brother Thor, but still greater than that of a regular human. As far as his magical abilities, he is a master of enchantments and illusion magic being able to achieve things such as shape-shifting, creating false clones of himself, and bestowing temporary life to inanimate objects. Which is probably one of the weirder things that he can do. Not exactly something that he commonly does, but it has happened. However, there are two things about Loki that would give Wanda a serious edge over. First is the fact that when on Midgard, otherwise known as Earth, Loki's power level is reduced quite significantly. This seems to be a trait of nearly all of the Asgardian characters as well. Even Odin himself appeared to be a bit weaker on Earth than anywhere else in the Nine Realms, so at least Loki has somewhat of an excuse for this. Then there is the fact that Loki almost always underestimates his foes, often to his own detriment. This is more than likely due to Loki's massive superiority complex, as he believes he is better and more powerful than pretty much anyone and everyone which often leads to him overstepping and going against his best laid plans, only to wind up suffering an often embarrassing defeat. So, theoretically, Wanda would just need to kind of bait him out, and then when he oversteps his bounds, take advantage of it, and then she'd have it in the bag. Just a little bit of a word of warning for Wanda, if you see any snakes around while Loki is in the area, maybe don't pick them up. Probably wouldn't end very well for you. Ah, boy oh boy, get your fanboy nerd rage ready, cause it's time to talk about Zatanna. The mistress of magic, the princess of prestidigitation, Zatanna is arguably DC's most well-known spellcaster. And I'm only gonna chalk that up partially to her costume choices. Now, a battle between Zatanna and the Scarlet Witch might just be the closest one that I'm gonna talk about on this list. Magic-wise, both are fairly evenly matched. So much so that one could probably argue that Zatanna and Wanda are kinda like counterparts of each other. Both are mutants. Kind of. Zatanna is considered a homo magi, meaning she is an offshoot of a human being, kind of like a mutant. Both have had a difficult life that has shaped the way that they view magic, and both often call upon the powers of twisted eldritch horrors from time to time. Now, of the two, Zatanna does have a slight edge, in that her spellcasting is a bit faster than Wanda's not really needing much of a wind-up. However, Zatanna's spellcasting actually requires her to say something verbally, which could be used to her detriment. In the past, people who have absolutely no business going up against a spellcaster of her caliber have managed to do so simply by hindering her ability to speak. Deathstroke once got in close and hit her in the liver, which in turn caused her to begin vomiting, which is a fairly effective way to stop her from talking. Joker, however, had his own effective means of shutting her up when he shot her in the neck. Yeah, that'd probably do it. And finally, Zatanna is puppophobic, meaning she has a deep fear of puppets. Now, she did get over it to a certain degree with therapy, but this is still something that Wanda could probably use against her. Maybe. I mean, she has shown that she has done that whole show them their deepest fear thing, so maybe she could do something there. All in all, as I said, this would be a very close battle, and actually one that I would love to see sometime. You know, in case Marvel and DC ever decide to do an Avengers vs. JLA sort of situation again, it would be cool to see in there. Probably isn't gonna happen on the big screen, unless, like, the House of Mouse buys Warner Brothers or something, which probably isn't gonna happen this year. But on the page, totally doable. Let's jump back over to Marvel for this entry and talk about everyone's favorite evil mage with a chip on his shoulder, Baron Karl Mordo. Being someone who studied magic under the Ancient One, Mordo here is a pretty talented spell slinger, as you would expect. But is it enough to take on the Scarlet Witch? I think you already know my answer to that question. 
As far as Marvel spellcasters, Mordo is definitely in the upper echelons. As stated before, he started his magical journey studying under the Ancient One. However, his lust for power meant that this was not enough for him, and he eventually betrayed him and tried to kill the Ancient One, before Doctor Strange stepped in and thwarted his plans. From there, he went on to align himself with Dormammu, the ruler of the Dark Dimension, who helped to bolster Mordo's knowledge of the Dark Arts and increased his power level significantly. Now, in a face-off between Mordo and the Scarlet Witch, Mordo does have a few advantages, mainly his greater overall knowledge of magic and his use of the dark arts, such as necromancy. However, Mordo's major weakness is the fact that he is effectively just a normal person once you get past his magical defenses. Of course, then you have to deal with his mastery of several different forms of martial arts. But Wanda isn't really a slouch in that department either, having trained under people such as Captain America, Hawkeye, and others. So she can definitely hold her own in a fist fight. On top of that, she's actually shown that she can use her magic to enhance her hits, as seen in her fight against Hope Summers in Avengers vs. X-Men. So she could probably handle Mordo in that regard. Basically what I'm saying is that I think it would be a relatively close fight, but I'm gonna have to give it to Wanda. Kinda hard to argue against someone who can just reshape reality to give herself an advantage whenever she needs to. How could I not include someone in this video whose name is literally magic? In this case, it's spelled with a K, but you know, close enough. Ilyana Rasputina, AKA Magic, is a member of the X-Men, ruler of Limbo, and future Sorceress Supreme of Earth. Oh yeah, and there is also the whole former host of the Phoenix Force thing, which is kind of a big deal, I guess, but doesn't really factor into this fight, so I didn't include it. Except for right now, so I guess this is me including it. In a fight against Wanda, Magic's power level really depends on where exactly the fight is taking place. If it is happening in Limbo, Magic would probably win pretty handedly. I mean, she managed to defeat Doctor Strange there, so I'd imagine Wanda would struggle as well. On Earth, however, I'm gonna have to give it to Wanda. Sure, Magic's Soul Sword would definitely come in handy here, as while it doesn't really do much against non-magical targets, it could see some serious use going up against Wanda's Chaos Magic. However, we probably shouldn't forget the fact that Wanda once removed the powers of nearly all mutants in existence by uttering just a single phrase. So presumably, her reality manipulation abilities could allow her to depower magic to a certain degree since she is, you know, a mutant and all that. I still don't fully understand how a mutation can give someone the ability to use magic when just, you know, studying does the same thing. Does that mean that Doctor Strange is a mutant? Are all spellcasters mutants? It just seems a little weird to me. That's all I'm saying. What do you need when you are dealing with the absolute chaos that Wanda Maximoff brings to the table? Order, obviously. And who better to bring that order than Dr. Fate, an agent of the Lords of Order. I'm sorry I said order so much in such a short amount of time. Order, damn it, I did it again. Dr. Fate is a founding member of the Justice Society of America and a powerful sorcerer in his own right. Donning the Helmet of Fate and chosen by the Lords of Order as their agent, Fate here is capable of some crazy stuff magically. In fact, he might very well have the largest magical repertoire out of anyone I've talked about on this list. This guy can utilize basically anything from healing magic, hypnosis, clairvoyance, to even some of the fancier arts such as necromancy and chronokinesis. This dude is seriously no joke, even if he does look kinda silly with that tin can on his head. However, there are two ways that you can deal with Dr. Fate regardless of who is actually under the helmet. The first and most obvious is to try to get the helmet off of whoever is wearing it. Once you do that, then it becomes significantly easier to deal with them, as much of their major strengths will be removed along with the fancy headgear. However, that is easier said than done. That helmet is a super powerful magical artifact, and as such is protected by some pretty potent enchantments. Of course, theoretically, those enchantments are derived from the power of order. So, using chaos magic, Wanda should be able to breach them. Again, theoretically. And then there is the fact that using magic, especially larger spells, actually drains Dr. Fate. Meaning that after long, drawn out mystical battles, Fate has to stop and rest for a period of time in order to regain some of his strength. So Wanda could just go on the defensive and let him burn himself out, 
then turn up the heat and take him down. All that being said, Dr. Fate here might just be the most thematically appropriate of all of Wanda's opponents on this list. But I still think that she wouldn't really have too much difficulty taking him out if they ever faced off. Which, like her fight with Zatanna, would be awesome to see if DC and Marvel ever decided to play nice and give us another crossover. So how about it, guys? Want to get along for 10 minutes and crank out an issue? It takes longer than 10 minutes, but you know what I mean. Hey there, everybody. I'm John Algetz. I made this video, and now I want to know what you think. Which comic book spell slingers do you think Wanda could be, if any? Be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, or go ahead and shoot me a response over on Twitter. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to CBR for more great videos just like this in the future.